Hi there. Now, before we start, just as a quick reminder, we were given this table here, which summarizes the times T minutes to the nearest minute recorded for a group of students to complete an exam. And in part C, we've now got to show that the estimated value of the lower quartile is 18.6 to three significant figures, and that's for one mark. And then in part D, go on to estimate the interquartile range of this distribution for two marks. So if you'd like to have a go at this, I'll just give you a moment to pause the video. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. Don't forget you can fast forward if you want to see the final answers, otherwise I'll take you slowly through the work solution. So we're looking for the lower quartile. So we need to add up the frequency here just to see how many students we've got. Well, that comes to a total of 200. So if we're looking for the position of the lower quartile, that's a quarter of 200, which is going to be the 50th value. And the 50th value is going to be in this class interval here. So if you watch the earlier part of this particular question, part B, where we had to estimate the median, you'll see that I constructed a class interval for that and showed you how we worked it out in more detail. I'm just going to do this very quickly for this one. So uh, I'm assuming that you've looked at that video. So what we do is we put our class interval here. We know it's in this interval, which goes from 10.5 to 20.5. So we'll put 10.5 here and 20.5 there. And then we've got no values less than 10.5, but 62 values that are less than 20.5. So we'll put 62 there. And we're looking for the 50th value, which will give us the lower quartile, Q1. OK, the 50th value. So I set up a ratio equation then by comparing this interval here with this interval under here. And it is equal to comparing this interval across here with this interval across there. So that equation then would be Q1 minus 10.5, that width across there, divided by the equivalent width below, which would be 50 minus 0. And that is equal to comparing the blue dotted width there, that's 20.5 minus 10.5, with the solid blue width across here, that's 62 minus 0. And all I need to do is rearrange this for Q1. Well, what we've got here is 10 over 62. And if I times it by 50, the denominator here, and add 10.5, I get that Q1 equals 10 then over 62 multiplied by 50. And then we add the 10.5. Working this out, you end up with Q1 equaling 18.56 and so on, which when rounded to three significant figures is 18.6 to 3SF. All right. Now we need to move on to the next part, part D. And in part D, then, we've got to estimate the interquartile range of this distribution. So we need to find out, then, the upper quartile. Because remember, the interquartile range is the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. Well, to get the upper quartile, that's going to be three quarters the way through this frequency here. 3 quarters of 200 is 150. So we're looking for the 150th value. Well, we've got 62 that are less than 20.5. And then if I add 62 plus 88, luck has it that it is 150. So the 150th value is 
25.5, okay? As an estimate, that is, okay? So let's just write that down, that Q3 must be equal to that 150th value, which is, well, we'll just put 150th value, and then we'll say what it is. It's 25.5. So that means that, therefore, the interquartile range, IQR for short, is going to be equal to Q3 minus Q1. We've got Q3, it's 25.5. We've got Q1, which was 18.56 and so on. When we subtract these two, we end up with 6.94 and so on. So if I give this to two significant figures, it's going to be 6.9 then to two significant figures, 2SF, okay?